In this video, you're going to learn on how to create your own React Chrome extension. And this is going to be a very basic clicker app. So if we go back in here and I actually open it, we can see that we can add or also remove. And even if we leave the app, do your own stuff and come back to it, I'm just going to pin it real quick. We can see that the number stays. So of course we can reset it, leave, also come back again, but hopefully you get the point. It's just a very basic Chrome extension, but it's built using React. So before we get started, make sure they like this video, subscribe to not miss upcoming content like this, comment down below if you have any questions or if you have anything that you would like to say. But now let's get started. We're gonna start by cloning this GitHub repository I just made called React Chrome extension template. And the reason we're doing this is because while recording, building this Chrome extension from the very start. So having all of these different dependencies installed, the webpack.config, tailwind, post CSS, and also the manifest.json file, all that combined can cause a, a lot of problems, which I'd rather you not go through because if you misspell one thing or do something wrong, you will have to restart this whole process and we don't want to waste any time on that. So we're just going to clone this repository or you can also just download it as a zip but we're gonna clone it so you can go to your desktop, right click anywhere and press on open terminal, which will open a command prompt. Then we're gonna write git clone and then paste in this URL and I will clone this repository. And so now I'm gonna find it. So this should be it. There it is, React Chrome extension template. And then you can also rename this to whatever you want. So let's just say React Chrome extension, which will also work. Now let's double click it. And then we can open this in terminal also. Press on code period. And this will open it in VS Code. And here we can see all of our different files. So we have our app.js, index.js, app.css, and we have all the different files here again. And for before we actually try to make this work, what we're gonna do is open this in terminal and run npm install, which will install all of these different dependencies that we have in here. And we can see that there's a bunch. There's also some in here, but this will take some time. So make sure that you let all of this install first. And there it is. And before we actually get started, for those of you that haven't watched my previous video on making a Chrome extension, we made it by using plain HTML. But if you don't know what some of these files are, I want to go over them so that you can at least understand what they are. So let's start with the manifest.json file, where all of the information about our Chrome extension is going to be. So we can start with the version. You can update this. So every time you have a new version, you can change that to 1.01. .01. And of course, you can really set this to whatever you want. Manifest version, keep that at three. This is just the version of the extension. Then the name, this is the name of your Chrome extension. So I'm just gonna, let's just say, set this to React Chrome extension. And then same goes in here. This right here will be the default title of the Chrome extension. Then we have a description, which again is the description of the Chrome extension and update this however you want to. The default pop-up, which is the index.html. And for those of you that watched my previous video, you should know that there's also a content script file and also the background script file, which I don't have in this video because I want to make this video as simple as possible. So we're not gonna be using it in this video in particular, but in the next videos, we are gonna be using them. So if I actually run npm, let's fix this, npm run build, you'll see what this is in a second. So it's gonna create a new folder. Let's wait for it to finish. So there it is. And so this default pop-up will be this index.html file. And now if we move on to the postcss.config.js file, this file is a tool that processes CSS with plugins which helps us use Tailwind with the Chrome extension. So if you don't have this postcss.config.js file, your Tailwind isn't gonna work. Then we have the actual tailwind.config.js file, which is a configuration file for Tailwind CSS. And then lastly, we have the webpack.config.js, which is a file that you don't know because it's not a file that you actually need for Chrome extensions that use plain HTML. So this file right here, is a configuration file for Webpack, which is a JavaScript bundler. And so this file defines how the Webpack should process the project file. So if we take a look here, we can see that the entry is gonna be source index.js, and it will be this file right here. If we scroll a little bit more down here, we can see some other stuff like exclude node modules. Then we have used 
the CSS loader and then post CSS loader, which will be this right here. And we have some other stuff, which when it works together, allows us to create this disk folder with the manifest.json file and all of the different files, which allows us to turn this into a Chrome extension. So now we can close all of the files and actually get started. And now that we have this set up, let's go ahead and run npm run start. Let's fix this, start. And this should start a React app, so let's wait a little bit. So there it is. This is the actual size of the window. So of course, if you want to, you can go to the app.css and right over here, you can make this larger if you want. So we can set this to 20. Same goes in here. And all of these guys right here. And now the screen would be bigger, but we're just going to keep it at 15. And let's open another terminal. And here we're going to run npm run build so that we can actually add this to our Chrome and see what it looks like. So while it's running, we can go to the package.json and see that we have this build, which uses the Webpack dependency to create this dist folder, which of course has the manifest.json file and all of the other files. So now we can actually go back in here, press on these three dots, and then we can go to extensions, manage extensions. And now we can go to load unpacked, or actually before we do that, yours might look like this. So you're going to want to go ahead and actually enable developer mode, and then we can go to load unpacked. And here you're going to want to go to your React Chrome extension and then go to the dist folder and press on select. And so there it is. Now, if we go and press on this extensions here, we can actually go ahead and pin this. And when we press on it, we can see our hello world and that this is a React Chrome extension. So if we go back in here, let's say the app.css and we set this to blue just to see if this works. We can run npm run build again, which will update the this folder. And then if we press on update and open the app again, we can see that the background changed to blue. So now this is working. We can go to the app.js file and add our code. And now that we understand how the basics of this work, let's go ahead and actually create our components here. So we can start by actually going in the app.css. And if we actually open the Chrome extension, we can take a look at how this works. So let's close all of this. We can see that we already have a container in here, even though we're not returning it over here. And that's because in the index.js file, we're creating a container with a class of containers. So we can use this class to add any other styles that we want. So let's set this to be grid and then set the grid rows to be two and you'll see why in a bit so let's go in the app.js and in here we can actually remove this boilerplate and return an h1 that's going to say count so this will be the count we can just set this to zero for now and the class names are going to be text 5xl font of bold we're going to set the text to be blue 500 and margin top of three then after that, we're going to have a div with a class name of bottom section. And you don't actually really need a class name for this because we're not going to be adding separate styles, but this is just so that you know what is inside of this div. Then in here, we're going to have three different buttons. So button, and let's start by setting the background to be red on this one. So background red 500 and then hover we will set the background to be red 700 and then we're also going to be creating a separate class which every single button is going to have because all of the other styles will be repetitive this one is going to have a minus sign plus and then this one will be reset let's fix this so reset this is going to change to blue and then this is going to change to gray. Same goes in here. This will also change to blue. Background blue 700. So there it is. And now let's actually go back to the app.css and add the special class. But before we do that, let's just add it in here. So we're going to call it button. Button over here. Same goes in here. Button. So just like that. And in here, we're going to write btn. We're going to write apply, just like that. 
And we're going to start by setting the font to be bold, the text to be extra large. We're going to set the text color. Let's fix this. Excel text color will be white. And then we're going to have PX of 4 and then PY of 2. Rounded will be default. And then we're going to set the margin top to be 8. So just like that. Now if we go back in here and actually we can see that it's still running. So we can just go ahead and actually open it. Not this. This right here. We can see that this is what our clicker game or whatever you want to call it looks like right now but of course we can add some padding so if we go back in here do have another class in here which is font bold so font bold just like that let's fix this or well, we already have it so i'm not sure what happened there and also this button should be under the bottom section just so that we have it at the bottom here and let's also add a class here of margin left of two just so that they're a little bit separated and of course this isn't really a bottom section anymore so we can just remove that and now let's actually see what that would look like if we update the clicker chrome extension that we have here so let's go ahead and press on update and if we press on that of course, nothing is going to change because we do have to update our dist folder. So let's go down in here, run the same command, npm run build. Wait for it to complete. Go back in here, update the Chrome extension. And so there it is. And of course, whenever we press anything, nothing is going to work because we haven't added the functionality yet. So let's go ahead and do that right now. We're going to go to the very top here. And we can start with the add button. So here we can write on click. We're going to call this handle, handle add. So now if we run const handle add, which will be a callback function. Here we're going to start by adding one to our count, which will be a use state. So const count and then also set count. And we're going to set this to be use state. And then we're going to have another variable, which is called initial count. But for now, we're going to set this to zero. And now that we have that, I just realized that this should be right over here. So there we go. Now what we can do is go and write set count. And then we can write count plus one. So now if we go and press on the plus icon, we can see that it gets larger. And now we have to work on the other one. So handle add, then we can have handle subtract just like that. And then we're going to put this one in here. So on click, handle subtract, and that's going to do the opposite. So if we actually reset, we can go below zero. So we want to make sure that that doesn't happen. So if count is smaller or equal to zero then return and now if we try to do this again so we can see that that doesn't work anymore and then we also have handle reset so handle reset which will set count to be zero just like that and we don't really need that doesn't really matter so handle reset we're going to go ahead and add it right over here on click handle reset just like that if we press on reset it's going to set to zero and of course we can add subtract and also reset it again and of course you didn't have to make separate callback functions for that you can just write it inside of the on click attribute but i just wanted to make this more readable to everyone so if you want to you can also do that and then now let's go ahead and run npm run build and see how that looks like so let's reload it there it is when press on the add button we can see the number go up then we can also reset it and if we want to we can subtract it but now the problem is if we leave and go back we can see that it resets to zero so to fix that we're going to be using local storage which will actually save that value so to get started let's go ahead and create a new use state which we're going to call initial count so let's write const initial or initial count and then also set initial count 
and here we will actually set this to be local storage dot get item and then we're going to call this count or this will be zero so if there's no item called count in local storage then we're going to set the initial count to be zero and we're also going to be setting this to be the initial count and then we actually have to write parse int and then write this inside of it which will convert this into an integer so now that we actually have that out of the way what we can do is create a use effect down here. So use effect, this will make our lives a lot easier. And then this will be for count. So every time the count changes, we can actually write local storage dot set item and then count to be count. So instead of in every single function here, updating the count or writing this in every single function, we can use a use effect so that every time the count updates, we update the local storage just like that. So this should still be running. I accidentally opened another one, but there it is. And I just realized why this isn't working. This is of course my bad. It's not a use state. It's just a variable. So let's go ahead and reload and see if this works. So now every time we reload, we can see that it's still working. If we set this to one reload, we can actually close this and open it again. It stays at one. Let's set this to 15, keep reloading, close, open, it stays the same. And even if we reset, close, open it again, we can see that it works. The only reason that this happens is because, let's just open this right here. If we go to application, local storage, we can see that we have our count over here. And of course, we can set this to a huge number if we really want to. So reload, and of course, there it is, but now, if we actually go here and run npm run build again, wait for it to finish. So there it is. We can go to our extension, reload, and now this should work the exact same way. So if this is set to six now, of course, we close it, do some stuff, come back to it. It's going to stay at six. Of course, we can set this back to one, do whatever you want. It's going to stay at one. Maybe we want this to be a really large number and we decide to go smaller. So let's just say 22, close it, open again. There it is. We can of course reset it too. And now this should be set to zero. So there it is. Of course, you can customize this however you want to. You can maybe even make another file right here. So when you have a project like this, even though it's pretty small, one thing you can do to make it better is make a separate file for maybe all of these functions, maybe even all of the elements right here. But this is just a very simple one, so I'm not going to do that. And so this is the full React Chrome extension app. And of course, new videos are going to be coming up soon. I do apologize for not uploading videos consistently, and that's because I have a lot of schoolwork, so I don't have much time making these videos. But of course, in the next videos, we're going to be making Chrome extension apps with some backends. So later on, when we're done with all of this, you're going to be able to connect your actual website with a Chrome extension and then doing different stuff. So for example, if you remember the previous blogs app, what you're going to be able to do is create your own Chrome extension and then make your blog over here, press on post, and then it will actually post on the actual blogs app. And then of course, you're going to be able to do it with different apps. But again, this is just a very simple video on how you can set up React to work with Chrome extensions because nobody wants to use HTML and write a Chrome extension because that would take forever. And so this will be the end of the video. So I really hope that you enjoyed it. And if you did, then make sure to leave a like, subscribe to not miss upcoming content, comment down below if you have any questions or if you have anything that you would like to say, and hopefully see you in the next video.